Hello and welcome to our lesson on the dot product. Um, so the dot product is a vector um, operation that is distinct from basic addition, scalar, multiplication. Um, so it's a vector, and I just realized I, I left a word out here. <laughs> it's a vector operation. So um, it's similar to the last topic where we talked about adding vectors, subtracting vectors, multiplying by scalars. Um, it's an operation, but distinct from the other two. Um, in that it's not so basic. Um, useful in a lot of different scenarios, including but not limited to trig applications. That's where we're going to see it here. Although, as mentioned in basically all of the topics um, in this module, as you move on to higher levels of mathematics, you will see some more application and just a build on these topics. Okay, so this is, again, scratching the surface, like an introduction to uh, the dot product. Okay, so sometimes the dot product is referred to as other things. Um, it's also called the scalar product. And it's called sometimes the scalar product because what you're doing um, in this operation is turning two vectors into a scalar. And finally, another name for the dot product is the inner product. And that's because when you move on to other levels of mathematics, you start to find other types of products like the outer product. Um, and you want to be able to uh, differentiate between them. So sometimes in some higher levels of math, you might see in a textbook someday um, the dot product referred to as the inner product. Okay, so here's the definition of our dot product. It says if you have <coughs> excuse me, if you have two vectors, uh, vector u, vector v, the, the product, the dot product, which is really just the product of those two vectors, um, can be found by multiplying the corresponding components and then adding the result. So if you see in the formula, multiplying u times v, it's u1, v1. So you're going to multiply the corresponding components there, the first parts, and then you're going to multiply um, u2 and v2, so the corresponding components there, and then we want to add the results, so we add those products. Okay, so that's our dot product, and the calculation actually is not so bad, but what we're going to end up with is a just a number, a numeric result, we're going to end up with the scalar. So it's taking the product of two vectors and turning it into a scalar again, so that's why sometimes this is called the scalar product. So let's practice just calculating here. This would be u1, u2, this would be v1, v2, or, or whatever letters you want to use here. The standard just happened to be u and v. So we want to multiply the corresponding parts here. So negative 5 times 3. We want to multiply the corresponding parts here. And maybe I can just change colors. Multiply the corresponding parts here. So we're looking at 2 times a negative 1, and then we're going to add those results. So a negative 15 and a negative 2 is a negative 17. So we would say that u times v is equal to a negative 17. And just a scalar, so negatives are okay, positives are okay. Um, zero is going to be okay, and and there you have it. That is our product of those two vectors. And let's try that again. So we have u1 and u2, and then v1 and v2. So again, we're going to multiply these corresponding parts, so negative 5 and 2. We're going to multiply these co corresponding parts, so 2 and 5, and then we're going to add the results. In this case, we're adding opposites, which means we end up with a 0. So we'd say u times v equals 0. And that's, of course, if this was defined as u and this was defined as v. Um, so one more. We've got the product of our co first uh, corresponding components there, so negative 5 times negative 5, and the product of our second corresponding components there, so 2 times 2. Adding those results gives us a positive 29 and a positive 4, a positive 29, positive 25 and a positive 4, which gets us to 29. So we end up with 29 here. We had 0 for our result here, and negative 17 for our result here. Again, positive, negative, 0, all acceptable answers, all just representing a scalar. And just some basic properties um, as you move along. Again, these are kind of intuitive, like the properties we saw of our vectors. Um, it doesn't matter the order that we multiply, u times v or v times u, those corresponding components are going to end up yielding the same answer. Uh, we can apply our distributive property. 
So if we had the sum of two vectors multiplied by another, we can also just find the, um, the instead of the product with the sum, it's the sum of the two products. It's If we were to distribute, that's what we would end up with over here, so we can apply our distributive property. Sorry that words weren't coming out there. Um, if we multiplied a vector by itself, that would be the same as squaring its magnitude. Um, if we multiply a vector by zero, it's going to zero out. And um, the commutative property applies here. It doesn't matter the order that we multiply by a scalar. Um, so if we had u and v and then a product of a scalar, we could multiply the scalar by u and then multiply by v, or mu multiply the scalar by a then multiply by u. The order that we matter doesn't multiply, so it's commutative. Okay, so the basic proper properties that apply to our real numbers are going to apply here. Okay, so what I want to show you next is called the dot product theorem. This is where some of the application starts to apply. And so that it makes a little bit of sense, I'm going to try to show you a basic version of the proof. And it comes from this, which should look familiar. This is our law of cosines, one of the three laws of cosines. So if we had a triangle and we had sides A, B, and C, and let's say angle B here, if we wanted to find the length for, let's say, side B, using the law of cosines, we would say that b squared is equal to a squared plus c squared minus 2ac times the cosine of b. Right, so that's that's nothing new. Now if we applied this to two vectors, so I have a new picture here, let's say instead of side a that this represented vector v, and then instead of side c, let's say that this represented vector u, and their initial sides, or initial um, points there coincided, and let's say that this side here represented their difference. So let's say we were we were looking at vector u and we were subtracting vector v and it created that segment there. So what we have here is basically the same picture as our lo law of cosines, where in place of b we have u minus v, in place of um, a we have u, in place of c we have v, and in place of our angle, b, we have theta. So if I just transferred, use the law of cosines with these new sets of variables, how does this look? Well, b squared in this case would be u minus v squared, and u minus v, that's going to be some magnitude, so u minus v squared is going to equal a squared, well a in this case is u, so that's going to be u squared, again that's a magnitude of u squared, plus c squared, c in our case is going to be v, so again that's going to be a magnitude of v squared, and then we would subtract twice, and I'm going to run out of space, because I'm writing a little bigger than I anticipated, uh, times a times c, again that's going to be the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v, turn the pen back on, magnitude of u, and then multiplying technically by the magnitude of v, and sometimes, let me undo that, um, sometimes you'll see the multiplication dot in there just to separate all these bars, and then lastly we would be multiplying by the cosine of, not angle b, but the cosine of theta, okay? So this looks like a big mess right now, but this is going to simplify a little for us. So this um, u minus v squared is technically uh, u minus, let me change colors, this u minus v squared, that is u minus v multiplied by itself, and so we would end up with a u squared, and then a minus uv and another minus uv, so minus 2uv, and then we have a plus v squared at the end if we were to multiply that out, but all with magnitudes just gets a little ugly when we start to um, put all those magnitude signs, and you kind of see that happening already. So this u minus v squared on this side, we could say becomes the magnitude of u squared minus twice uh, u times v, let's not worry about that just yet, u times v, that's a whole separate product, and then we have plus the magnitude of v squared, so that's just translating this over, okay? So that's the one side. On the other side we still have everything we had before. Magnitude of u squared, magnitude of v, 
squared, and again I'm writing just too big. Let me see if I can shrink this down a little. And then we want 2 times the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v, and my goodness, I really just can't. Don't mind me writing all this gigantic stuff. Magnitude of v, and then we have the cosine of theta. So if we try to clean this up from here, um, and combine like terms. It looks a little strange, but let's say I wanted to subtract over this magnitude of u squared. If I subtract it over to the other side, because there's a like term there, it's going to end up canceling for both sides. The same thing is going to happen with this magnitude of v squared. Magnitude of v squared, so that's going to be gone. And both sides have a factor of negative 2, so if I divide this side by negative 2 and divide what's left on this side by negative 2, that's going to cancel and that's going to cancel. So what are we looking at left here? Um, left on this side we have the product of u and v, u times v, equal to, on this side it's the magnitude of u multiplied by the magnitude of v and then multiplied by the cosine of theta. And that is, in fact, our um, dot product theorem, okay? So it's the dot product theorem, dot product really applying here because we're technically multiplying two vectors, um, so it, it is a dot product, it is a product of two vectors. However, this particular version of it, um, which we're calling a theorem because it's been proven, is useful in calculating missing angles, just like the law of cosine could be useful in calculating missing angles. So if we have a picture like the one we saw there, where we have two non-zero vectors and their initial points coincide, and then we have the angle theta being the smaller of the two angles that are formed by the connection of u and v, so basically you have some angle that's between 0 and pi, then this is going to hold. And again, this is particularly useful in finding um, the, what in the world, not he angle, that's two typos on one note sheet, finding the angle, I don't know how I manage, finding the angle between two vectors. So let's try that here. Um, if our theorem says that u times v is equal to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of theta. If I want to be able to find the cosine of theta, how would I solve for that here? Well, the cosine of theta is being multiplied by these two terms. So if I wanted to solve for the cosine of theta, I can divide those over. So what I can say is that the cosine of theta is equal to u times v divided by those magnitudes. And now, this doesn't actually look so terrible. So we have u and v defined for us. So on the top of our fraction, u times v, let me change colors here. So this is just the, the, the theorem rearranged, okay? So that's the theorem and then I solved it for the cosine. But in our situation, our cosine of theta is gonna equal our u is negative three, one, our v is two, five, and then on the bottom, we're looking at the magnitude of u and the magnitude of 20, uh, sorry, of v. <laughs> magnitude of u. Now how do I find the magnitude of u? Remember the magnitude of u is the length of u, and the length is given by the displacement of x and the displacement of y. So if you were thinking about this in a triangle, the displacement on x is 3, the displacement on y is 1, so 3 squared plus 1 squared has to equal that magnitude squared. That's a basically Pythagorean theorem. So it's the square root of 9 and 1, which makes it a radical 10. And then the magnitude for v, the magnitude for v, again, it's Pythagorean theorem problem. It's the square root of 2 squared and 5 squared, so 4 and 25, which makes it a radical 29. Now let's go a little further here because we can actually find the, that dot product on the top of that fraction. So if you multiply the corresponding components there and then add the results, let me 
do this work over here. Sorry, my work is starting to get a little messy. The dot product here, um, we would have negative 3 multiplied by 2, we would have 1 multiplied by 5, and then we would add those results. So that's a negative 6 plus 5, which makes it a negative 1. So this becomes a negative 1 over radical 10 times radical 29 can become radical 290. I don't know that that's any simpler, but that's what it is. So we're at a place now where we're trying to solve for theta, um, and part of it was rearranging our theorem, but now we have to get rid of cosine. Now that we have a manageable amount that we can actually put into the calculator, we can say that theta is going to be equal to the inverse cosine of negative 1 over radical 290. And it becomes a calculator problem from there. So let's go to our calculator. Let's make sure it's in degrees. And let's ask it to find the inverse cosine of a negative 1 over radical 290. And that makes our angle about 93.4 degrees. And there you have it. Okay? Really not so terrible. So we're multiplying some corresponding um, components to find a dot product and then applying that to our law of cosines to be able to find the missing angle or an angle that's between two vectors. So it's a lot of worlds colliding here but hopefully manageable for you. So there it is. I've, I hope you've got enough to get going on your practice. Again, we're sort of scratching the surface. Um, if you were to start googling things, you're going to see uh, some topics that take these things a little further, just not anything that's necessary for us, especially toward the end as we're winding down here. Um, so again, hopefully you got enough to get working on your practice. As always, if you need some extra help, then just reach out. Till next time, take care.